Hey guys, this is a uh, 1997 Ford F-250. This vehicle was brought to us for a charging system problem along with a problem in the instrument cluster with the gauges and um, an intermittent uh, condition with the uh, uh, ABS light and check engine light coming on, sometimes dim as the customer stated. Uh, we're going to start with the alternator issue which uh, this the, the customer had already installed a new alternator and jumped uh, one of the circuits at the alternator with this alligator jumper you can see in my hand. Um, we took that out and started over. We disconnected the three pin connector at the alternator and we made our checks. There's one lead there that's going to be ignition which we had already checked. We have, we have our, um, I'm sorry, there's one lead there that's going to be battery, the yellow, which we did check already. We have our battery feed. The other lead is uh, ignition or the light circuit, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to call it light circuit to keep things simple in this video. Our uh, our light circuit in the truck does not work. Okay, so when we turn the key on, we should have a light for a bulb check that tells us that that circuit is good, the integrity is good on that circuit. We do not have that. So we installed a T-pin, as you can see in the um, clip here. Second, uh, there it is. All right, that's the uh, green and red wire. That is the light circuit. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some back probing to test the circuit and see what's going on here. When we went into this truck, uh, we already had checked the cluster because the gentleman also had the cluster out of the vehicle. We did check to make sure that we have a bulb, and um, the bulb is good. Okay. Uh, we also checked for power at the uh, at the other side of the cluster, which we have, and we have nothing. Uh, we have we have a broken wire in this vehicle from the cluster to this alternator. Now, I'm going to show you how to make this a uh, little bit simple to check. Broken wire could be a real tough uh, tough thing to find. All right. So if you do it in a in a um, systematic way, you know, always try to do it the same way, you'll have a little more success. Here you can see the connector that, the, uh, that was installed from, you know, from the factory. That's the light circuit. I don't exactly know why they have this uh, connector in there, uh, but it's okay. We could take it apart, and uh, we had checked from the alternator to the one side of the connector to make sure that our wire wasn't broke there. It's not. Uh, you could actually visually look. It's, it's pretty open. But the next step was to trace the harness further into the vehicle. So what we did was we looked at, obviously it goes past the battery to the, uh, to the front radiator support. And it runs across that radiator support to the, um, to the firewall. Okay. So what we're looking for here is any indication of uh, tampering, uh, you know, water damage, anything like that, anything where the tape might be peeled back, uh, you know, anything, anything visual. That's the first thing you want to look for is anything visual. That's the, you know, the less intrusive way of, uh, of dealing with this stuff. Now, there are other ways to find, you know, opens. Uh, I'm just showing you you know, a way to do this if you don't have, you know, high-tech tools, I guess you want to say. Um, what we found was near the air box, some tape missing. Uh, and uh, what we noticed was the wires were laying against the fender well there, as you could see. Um, I'm trying to show you the uh, a better shot of this, of this uh, harness. It's a little tough to get in there. I'm going to pull this harness back in a minute and I'm going to show you the uh, the damage that we found. Okay, now this is, remember now, this at this point was all visual. This was just looking to see if, you know, anything obvious was going on here. And uh, I didn't like the rough spot that I saw there and uh, the fact that the harness had no tape around it or conduit, which, you know, led me to this. Um, 
this now keep in mind as simple as this might look right now this vehicle was worked on there were uh, you know <laughs> there was an alternator replaced on it there were um, multiple other things done to it in the end they decided to jump this circuit to get the alternator to charge which did not work apparently um, luckily it didn't cause any damage to anything uh, you know I've definitely seen that before so what we did here is uh, we took another piece of wire which actually we had the same color which is good and um, we used we used adhesive shrink tube to uh, solder the new you know we solder the new wire in place and then put the shrink tube over it uh, as you're going to see here we're going to heat it up with a uh, with a heat gun or a torch and um, when this heats to a certain point the adhesive melts around the inside and seals everything makes it waterproof this is a good repair okay um, you know there's uh, there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever it's as good as factory uh, the only thing is that once this is finished um, you have to you know you have to we, we did check already to make sure this wiring harness is not damaged any place else but what you have to do here is make sure that it doesn't happen again okay this is a plow truck this thing is out you know in all kinds of weather it's in very rough conditions uh, it's getting banged around a lot there's a lot of vibration in the vehicle uh, that's what causes this stuff you know guys it's a uh, it's a combination of things it's the elements it's the uh, conditions that the truck is you know the environment the truck is in um, the way it's used you know these are all these are all contributing factors to this stuff so when you're working on this stuff just keep in mind uh, you know you find a problem like this it you know fixing it yeah it's great eh? you know no problem but you have to go this go the extra step make sure that you um, somehow or another insulate this harness and make sure that it's not going to happen again whether it be uh, you know adding conduit to it or um, you know tape I mean tape is good tape is not going to work as well as you know you need you need something an insulator over that uh, in this case I decided to you know to do something simple I um, I put a piece of uh, 5 8 hose over it, which I'll show you in a minute um, all I was doing there was making sure that I that I have my feed uh, back to this uh, back to this alternator uh, right now I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that this uh, charging system is working correctly okay you're gonna see this voltage come up before when we started it was at 8 volts or so um, you know our battery was you know ready to die completely and um, we threw a charge on it while we're, you know while we were working on it and uh, you know at this point made sure that once we started it up that the uh, the alternator kicked in and our charging system voltage goes up to its uh, to its correct voltage so you can see that here um, it's gonna come up a little bit more uh, it should go to about 14 volts or so I'm sorry about the sound on this video, guys. There's no, uh, there's no sound except me uh, rambling on, but that's uh, that's because the audio on the camera wasn't working too well, and I wanted to make sure that I can show you what I was doing here and get a point across of uh, you know what we were testing and how we were going about it. So uh, that's why I did it this way. Okay, now you can see the charging system voltage is up in spec. The battery light obviously works in the vehicle now on a bulb check goes out when the ch system starts to charge so that's a fix now here's what I was talking about with that rubber hose uh, I just took a piece of 5 8 hose split it down the center and um, I'm gonna put it around that uh, around that harness where it was rubbing and uh, you know that's that's gonna be the insulation that's it uh, I did strap tie this later um, I didn't show it in the video, but uh, I did strap tie that uh, that insulator, make sure that it doesn't move, and 
you know, fall off. Again, you got to consider this thing is driven in rough, uh, rough terrain, I guess. So uh, I didn't want it just laying there. <coughs> Okay, so uh, that does it for the alternator. You can see the light come on there. Bulb check. If you notice, though, the gauges are not moving, um, or most of them are not moving. The uh, the lights on the other the other lights for the dash are not coming on. Okay, and that's what we're gonna get to and uh, figure out next in this truck. 